Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And on today's video, we're taking a look at a laptop. Now, this laptop is owned by someone who lives locally and quite often we see them in the shop down at Motor Parts. Some of you live locally, will know where that is. But for those of you that know us, uh, yeah, I do work part-time in a Motor Parts store on a Sunday. So if you want to drop in and say hello and you're in the Bristol area, you're more than welcome to do so. Or potentially, if you're like this gentleman, you could also say, do you fix laptops? So... This is a Lenovo ThinkPad L440 and the thing is basically it says it's slow. So I said, yeah, no worries, I'll take a look at it. I won't charge you for it, just I'll have a look. It's a nice thing to do for somebody. So we'll take a look and see what the deal is. So laptop being slow could be down to many things such as thermals, could be thermal paste, it could be blocked vents, could be lacking RAM, it could be an old disk drive in there any one of those things and before I actually got this out the bag I had no idea what spec it was at all and I don't think that he does either it's just he bought it wants to use it go online go on to Google Facebook all that kind of usual stuff so in today's video we're going to go through have a look see what can be done see what needs to be done and see if we can make this thing any faster now I will say I have briefly fired this up off camera just in case because obviously personal data etc etc and just trying to get it to start up into Windows. We were looking at somewhere around about the, well, almost three minutes to get into Windows. So that gave me some inclinations of what may be going on here. So I'm pretty sure there is a traditional old style HDD in this particular system, so old mechanical drive. So that is gonna be a problematic thing, especially running Windows 10, which I believe this is on. I'm pretty sure it is. There is a Windows 8 Pro sticker on the bottom, so that gives you some idea of the age of this machine. And also, I did have a quick look inside at the specs, and it does appear to be a Intel i3 processor, which is probably not the best of starts. And also, it would appear that we've only got four gigabytes of RAM, which also is probably not a great thing either. So, I think the best thing to do to start off with is we'll take the back cover off. Everything else actually looks to be okay doesn't seem to have any obvious issues or anything. It seems to be pretty well looked after. So I think we'll take the back panel off and actually have a look inside and see what is actually inside this thing. So let's get started and see what's going on. Now, on camera, this actually looks a little bit dirtier than it is. Actually, to me, eyesight-wise, actually looks fine on certain angles. It's, uh, yeah, it looks pretty clean, but there is a little bit of a, a bit of a mark here. So we'll give that a clean up anyway, once we're done. Now to remove or to gain access inside of this thing, there's a couple of screws, so it looks like we've got one there, one there, one there, one there, and then that panel should come off. So let's start over in this corner and see how we go. So it looks like they are captive screws, which is quite common on laptops these days, especially the ones around about this era, sort of the mid 2000s, mid 2010. It saves them getting lost in the workshop, I guess. So that is the four screws undone. So hopefully if we just gently pry this up at some point, yes, it will come out in one piece. Excellent. So that looks all okay. No signs of damage in there. So let's take a little look inside and see what we have actually got here. So taking a look inside, uh, yeah, pretty much what I expected to see. So the, uh, the cooling solution looks absolutely fine. Doesn't appear to be any dust or build up on there, but we'll give that a blast out anyway. So we've got our heat sink going into the processor, which also will be the onboard graphics as well. Probably not gonna to touch that at all. I think that's absolutely fine. I will take a look at the temperatures a little bit later on, but this is probably the problematic areas, this one and this one here. So if we take a look at the RAM, I'm not too sure how well it's actually gonna focus on there. I'll try and get you some close up shots of it. So this is DDR3. So it's low profile or low, the DDR3L. And this is uh, quite a slow stick, and also it's only four gigabytes of RAM. And no sorted RAM on this one, which is great news. And we do have two slots, so potentially we can upgrade this to, I think 16 gigs is probably gonna be the maximum for this particular chipset. So we can put two eight gig sticks in there. That is gonna be significantly better. Windows 10 with four gigs of RAM is asking a lot of the operating system. And also if you open up any applications such as Chrome, etc., that's gonna absolutely gobble up all of the RAM. So that's definitely something we need to look at. So we'll take a look on Amazon shortly and see what sort of prices we can get 16 gigs of RAM for. I think that would probably be a worthwhile exercise of replacing that. And next of all, we've got this. So you can pretty much tell 
from a laptop when you open it up that this is going to be a hard disk drive just by the look of it just the way it's packaged etc but just to be on the safe side i'm actually going to remove the screw which is holding it in place and i'm pretty sure with these you just lever them up slightly and then you should be able to wiggle the drive from the unit excellent stuff and yes if we spin it around you can see it is as expected so this is a mechanical drive manufactured 16th of march 2015 so uh, over 10 years old so it's done pretty well and this one appears to be i think it is a 500 gig model so potentially we could expand the storage a little bit on that as well so take it up to maybe a terabyte just to give it a little bit of extra breathing room I'm not too sure how much data has been used on this. So I think the next thing for me to do is to, before we do anything drastic, what I want to do is to make a clone of this drive and we'll put it onto an SSD anyway, because I don't really have any other drives available mechanical wise. So yeah, I'm going to transfer this over onto a SSD and I might actually just try it with the four gigs of RAM, see if we can get it to boot up a little bit quicker and be a little bit more responsive. I think that would be a step in the right direction. So let's break off from this and we'll go over to the computer and I'll show you how you can clone the disk. But actually, before we do that, something which uh, some of you may not have come across before is this actual, the mounting tray that the disk goes in. Now generally when you put an SSD back in, these kind of caddies you don't necessarily need to use and sometimes they don't physically fit anyway. But I'm gonna try and reuse as many bits as we possibly can here. So if you look at the side, you'll see there's nothing actually there. You can't see any screws or anything. So what Lenovo have actually done with these is made them so they're just basically a push fit, which makes it nice and easy to remove. So all you need to do is from the SATA end, the connection end, just gently wiggle the plastic and it should just come out. So we'll do that on the other side as well. Gentle little wiggle. This one's being a little bit more uh, aggressive. There we go, I think it's stuck possibly on the side there. So you can do that on the outer edges as well. And there we go. So that has freed up the drive. So we've still got our caddy. So we can stick that back in with the new drive should we want to. Or you can just fix it down with some double-sided tape. And also if you want to for shielding purposes, you can potentially remove this adhesive around the outside edges and put that onto your new drive. I probably won't bother, but uh, we'll see how it goes. But first of all, let's head over to the computer and get this thing cloned. Okay, so we're on our computer here. So I'm using Disk Genius, which uh, some of you have probably seen videos on before. It's a pretty good piece of software. Very handy for little tasks like this. So we've got our drive. So we've got our main drive. That's our Windows disk. We've also got an Arco, one terabyte SSD. So that's what we're going to be cloning onto. That is going to be significantly faster than the old Hitachi drive we've got here. So what we want to do is to clone this drive basically to that drive there. So if we go to tools and then we'll go to clone disk and then it's asking us for our source disk. So that is going to be the one that we want to take the data off. So it's going to be this one here, the SATA one, 465 gigs. So we'll choose that one, click OK. Then we need to choose the destination. So we'll choose that one there, new volume D, which is our Arco, one terabyte. And then you've got the option to copy all files. And also we're going to expand that as well to make full use of the drive. If you choose copy all sectors or copy valid data sectors only, you will only be able to do the physical size. So you'd have to resize it in another program a little bit later on. But that's gonna be fine. So let's click on start. And this should be the fastest way of doing it. So we'll click okay. And you've got the option for doing a hot backup or hot migration. It doesn't really make a great deal of difference. I'm just gonna choose hot migration. Just let it get on and do its thing. So it's gonna basically create a snapshot of the drive and then copy it over after. Ideally, obviously, you don't want to be doing anything with the computer in the meantime and just let it get on and do its thing. So this is going to be a little bit slower than usual because we are copying from a hard disk drive rather than SSD to SSD. But realistically, just leave it, let it do its thing and uh, we'll come back when it's done. OK, so we're coming up to the, uh, the finishing point here. And as you can see, this has taken just over 45 minutes. And yeah, we timed that really well. So that has all been done now. So need to just press complete and that is it done. So we can close this down now. I'm going to disconnect the drive and I'm going to try it in the other machine and just hope and pray that it actually works. So let's try that next.
So that's all done and it boots up much faster. Now I've turned the screen off obviously for personal information, don't want to see that kind of stuff, but it is working, it's absolutely fine. It does seem considerably faster. So previously when we did the first boot up with the system as it came, we're looking around about the best part of three minutes for it to boot up to get to the Windows desktop and show icons. Actually, the icons took a little while to load, which is always a little bit worrying. But with the Oracle SSD, which we've installed, uh, yeah, much better. It's less than a minute to get to the same place. Now, this is still with only four gigs of RAM, so that really does still need doing. But this was just to validate that putting an SSD in here would make a significant impact on the performance of the machine, which obviously is no surprise. Removing an old hard disk drive, yeah. It's a pretty obvious solution, but also I think we do need to put the extra RAM in there just to give it a little bit more breathing room. So what I've done is I've actually got in contact with the customer and what I wanted to do is just to read to you what I actually sent to them. So to see if this kind of makes sense to you and this is easy enough to digest, uh, it seems it has been, so we'll, we'll go with it. So I just said, I uh, just started having a look at your laptop. I see what you mean it is a little bit on the slow side smiley face obviously uh it only has four gigs of ram which is very low for running windows 10 actually that is the kind of bare minimum also the disk drive is an older mechanical drive rather than a modern solid state disk or ssd so the problem here is essentially twofold the hard drive is slow anyway and when a drive is slow it will often try to use the physical ram memory to compensate in this case the laptop is already using almost all of the physical memory so it just takes its time and waits for resources to become available, which sadly they don't become available. Also, it seems that actually having a look around on here, most of the common background applications have already been disabled. So that isn't an option to reduce those to give it a little bit more breathing room. So my diagnosis effectively would be to increase the physical RAM to 16 gigabytes, which is the physical limitation of this particular unit. Uh, that will give it some more breathing room and possibly install a faster solid state disk to make the programs load quicker. The RAM is about £15 on Amazon. I can get that for tomorrow. That is a necessity in my opinion. The faster SSD drive would be about £40, one of these, and the same applies it could be here tomorrow. So I was going to order one of these anyway, but I've got one, so uh, that's a job done. Uh, if that seems like more than you wanted to spend, I would try the RAM upgrade anyway. That should still make it easier to open and use programs, but it won't be as fast as it potentially could be. Sorry if this is a lot to digest. Any questions, please let me know. All the best, Mike. Um, so that's basically how I left it, waiting for a reply, and actually in between me starting filming, replied back, hey, do what you need, uh, you can add both those things, RAM and SSD drive. So, yeah, cool, consider it done. So obviously, we're kind of halfway there because we've done the time-consuming part. The drive transfer took about 45 minutes, so um, roughly about an hour to kind of get it all done and dusted, so that's fine. It's installed, it's done, great stuff. I did have a quick look on the system as well to see if there's anything else obvious going on. Uh, there's no obvious viruses. There's some Epson printer scanner stuff going on in the background, which is trying to update the drivers, but that's absolutely fine. I will actually check in with him, see if he's still using that Epson printer. If not, we'll remove that software. Also, I checked the temporary files. There's about 35 megabytes of files in there, which is absolutely fine. That's completely normal. So it doesn't need any cleanup there. Other than that, it's a pretty clean system. I have gone ahead and also removed Copilot obviously, and also Cortana, because Cortana was still on there for some reason, so we've got rid of both of those. Obviously, if you want to add them back in at any point, that's very easy to do from the Microsoft Store, so that's not going to be a problem at all. But yeah, overall, it's a very nice system. It seems to run actually surprisingly well, considering it's still only got four gigs of RAM and that slightly older core Intel i3 whatever processor it is. It's a pretty old one. I'll try and put it on the screen if I remember to find out which one it is. But yeah, it's not a great processor. And obviously this is a lower spec ThinkPad. So we can't expect miracles, but certainly putting the uh, SSD drive has made it much, much more usable. So this leaves me in a position where I'm now waiting for the RAM to arrive tomorrow, but that's gonna be super easy to do. Just remove that panel on the back, push the RAM in. Uh, I'll try and insert some shots of me doing that whilst I'm talking here. So you can see that that has been done. But yeah, effectively, that is it. We've revived the laptop from being basically kind of unusable to being, well, yeah, certainly usable for at least a few more years and at a pretty reasonable price of around about £60 all in. So yeah, I think that's fantastic value for money. I'm not going to be charging for labor or anything because I did say um, I don't mind doing the work as long as you don't mind me making a video of it. So we've got some means of actually getting some income out of it. So hopefully you lot have actually enjoyed the video and uh, yeah, that I think is going to pretty much wrap it up. Unless there's anything else I need to add to the video at the end, which uh, you may see, but hopefully not. Hopefully this should be a done deal. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, give this a clean up in terms of the outside. 
got some really good spray for doing that so we'll make it look like brand spanking new but yeah i think that's pretty much it hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you have smash that like button if you want to see more content like this on a daily basis maybe consider hitting subscribe and also that chime notification that way you'll be notified of future video releases but for now i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video thanks for watching